All right, welcome back to the shop. So this video here, I have another uh, Caterpillar dozer transmission. This one's uh, similar to the D8R Series 2 transmission that I just did a couple months ago. Uh, this is actually a D9T, so it's probably the exact same. I haven't even looked it up yet, honestly. Um, so this belongs to the same customer. Um, you know, just a reminder, I'm not a transmission repair shop. I don't wanna be a transmission repair shop, but I do do them for, uh, I've got a few friends that I do them for, just to help them out. He asked me to bring if I can if he could bring it here and ask me to go through it, take it apart, see what's wrong with it, see if we can figure out why it's grenading itself. So today I'm gonna pull the differential off the top and then I'm just gonna get a quick look at the transmission and uh, we'll see what we find in this one. Uh, it should be fun. There's a lot of uh, it's gonna need a lot of parts, I think. All right, I got the bolts out and the diffs ready to lift off of the transmission. And here we go. Right off the bat, I don't see any clutch packs destroyed. Um, he did say he found a couple needle bearings uh, in the screen when they pulled it off or in the filter. So I'm assuming one of the planetary units probably grenaded. But um, there's nothing we can tell right now as far as damage just by what we can see. But there's another pack that's down here that we can't see. And then there's also the balance piston uh, inside here. Uh, this packs in here, uh, you know, clutch pack in here as well. But there's a series of uh, planetaries with, you know, the small planetary gears that take the needle bearings. And one of those obviously is grenaded. We're going to have to find out which one and see how bad the damage is. So I got the planetary unit pulled out. I'm gonna get the valves off. Um, it's just mopping up some oil out of here, but look at the inside of this, down at the bottom. Look at all that steel, yikes. It's gonna be expensive. Look at all that, just ground up. Let's get in there and see what it is. All right, so I've got this first piston set off and I've gone in here down to this uh, second clutch pack down. Um, one issue I got is, what are you looking here? See all the steel in here that's gathered in the piston. Um, I don't know why, but right here, you know, where the where this writes on the dowels, that is extremely wore out. That should have been changed on the last rebuild. I doubt that that happened. Um, and it's really dark, like it's been fried. So I don't know if it was put back together that way. Um, the clutch doesn't work real bad. Except the, I think those are cat. Those are aftermarket clutch discs. 
Yeah, these are not cat discs. These are aftermarket. And this should have been changed. A lot of people just look to see if the disc is worn or if it's you know smooth. It looks like maybe they buffed it up and cleaned it up a little bit. But these dowel holes really matter. Um, they get oblong like that. They should be a perfect C so they fit on the dowel nice. This way they're gonna chatter on that dowel real bad. And then eventually they're gonna break off. That D8R transmission I had in here a couple months ago, this is that, the actual plate that failed on that one and these broke off. It actually had the old style with the solid hole and those all broke off and probably when the discs went bad. But anyway, um, these will break eventually and then you're just gonna create trouble. You're gonna fail the transmission over that. So then we look in here on the hub that those discs ride on. You can tell they got a lot of heat in here. You can see all the marking it left and then lots of steel right here. Um, with the, piston slot that goes in and this is probably going to be the planet here where you find that failed that made all that steel possibly i don't know yet but we'll get into it all right so i forgot to turn turn the time lapse back on before i pulled this uh manifold off but um so i lifted that off in fact there's a just there's another clutch pack in there the, the first clutch pack i'm going to i don't know if it's number one or the last one i don't know which way it starts from but i'm going to pull that apart last because i looked inside it, it's real clean and i've got to use the press um, to once i remove the the clutch pack out of that housing i need to use the press to take it apart so i'm going to use that do that in just a few minutes where after i get all this done but right under here right underneath this clutch pack here which would be the third pack down here's a needle bearing right here and it's whoop, just fell on that manifold hole a little, little passage um it was actually between the oh look at that Lift up the clutches. There's a bunch in here just wadded up. Inside this, these clutches, there's a piece of gear. Yeah, these three are gear pieces. And that other piece was a ball bearing. And so I need to get this off. It's probably gonna be this um, carrier here that's screwed up, this planetary. But I just wanna get that on the, on the camera here, or you know, film that. Yeah, there's a bunch of it underneath all of this. So in fact, I'm gonna have, have Alex hold this well, I pull those packs off there, or those clutch discs off, and we'll uh, see how much crap's under there, just so I can document it. Yeah, just without time lapse, we get real life footage of it. I can't even separate that. There we go. Okay, get that disc off. Let's see if that's cat or if it's an aftermarket. It looks aftermarket by the color. Of the steel there and just the pattern on it doesn't look like a cat disc to me cat will put the it'll say cat and it'll have the part number in here which it's not this is an aftermarket disc so I'm lay that down get this plate off just keep on stacking this steel all inside here in, the, in these clutches these are roughed up really bad so these plates and discs are going to be changed. Look at that, it just tore up. Here, right here, there was a piece of bearing just stuck in there. Just gouging it up. And then look down here, there's needle bearings all throughout here. Let's see if I can collect some of these without dropping them down that hole. Dropped a few down there. This thing's gonna take a lot of cleanup. That's a piece of clutch material there. Freaking needle, bent needle bearing. Chunks of gears. All right, so I started, I took the retaining ring off and took that hub off that was on here. They actually called it gear, but I think it's a hub. And then I had to actually get the, my pry bar in here to pry to get this off. Uh, the slide, the sun gear is going to come up in this uh, planetary group. So this planetary gear wasn't the failure, obviously. It's still turning, but look inside here. This gear or hub or whatever is destroyed. And then we'll come back over here to this planetary. And these gears are just destroyed. I don't know if something got in there or if something came apart on it. Uh, we'll have to get it out and get it apart to see. I don't know if maybe they're aftermarket gears that were put in. 
or or what but you can see the next layer down the gears too they're they're all chewed up and destroyed too So you can see in the time lapse, um, I pulled that manifold off over there. Uh, had to kind of pry it to get it started, and you can see just more carnage in here. This gear is just split apart. Um, All right, so I started taking these discs and plates off, and I've had to pry every one of these discs off. I looked at them in their aftermarket as well. I don't know if it's just all the garbage that's in here, or if this ring here got split. Maybe it's you know op you know split open, so it's it's putting tension on it. I can't tell. Or if these discs just got so hot that they shrank. I've seen that happen. Yeah, these are always fun to take apart. Look at the freaking carnage in there. Look at that. The disc material just roasted off of there. It's warped like crazy too. Put it over there on the stack. And the plates come off sort of okay. I had one that got stuck. And then I had one spring that was stuck, which is funny. You should have never had a, had a spring get stuck before. Look at all this clutch material in here. But yeah, one of these springs here was stuck down in the hole. I had a fight to get that out. What's the fun of these ones that are just destroyed? They're really hard to get apart. I mean, theoretically, if you had the wrong part get wadded up, you could actually have a transmission that's just stuck together that you just can't get apart. And you're gonna have to replace probably a lot more parts than if you could just, you know, cause you might not, might not be able to get some of the good parts that are in there. But so far, I'm able to get this one apart. I've never had a disc stuck like this before. This is funny. Well, I mean, it's not funny, but. Yeah. Yeah, that disc is just. just destroyed. Yeah, I've looked at these too. I can't find a cap part number in any one of these discs. So I don't know if the customer wanted aftermarket put in here or not. It's possible. I don't think so. Um, I know the last transmission I did for him, we talked about only using cap parts. Um, it just doesn't pay. In these transmissions, I never use aftermarket. There's some places where I'll consider it. Of course, I use aftermarket on some things, especially if it's a part that I know Caterpillar doesn't make. You know something like a throttle pedal assembly or something stupid like that but when it comes to these transmission discs and stuff and bearings i never use aftermarket it could just cost too much money when these things come apart and they come unglued like this this, this is going to cost there's twenty thousand dollars worth of parts here probably at least so it, it's it doesn't pay So I hope the time lapse picked that up. Um, I, had, I was trying to chisel pieces of these broken gears out of here so I could get this this uh, hub off of this planetary. There's all these chunks that came out. I couldn't get it off. It's stuck on here. And you can't get this plate off until you get this gear off. And that's how you unstack this. So I flipped it over, pulled the snap ring off here. The snap ring, by the way, hadn't been changed at the last rebuild and it's half wore out. Uh, the last tranny I did at D8R, I changed that snap ring because it was wore out like that. So that's just 
stupid not to change that. So anyways, I pulled it apart and this is that manifold at the bottom and it's all tore up from the planetary, from crap getting in there. Uh, here's the piston. It's got some debris in it, but it's not bad. But this is gouged up pretty bad. And then I haven't unstacked it yet. Just yeah, because I wanted to get the camera and kind of show what we're seeing here. So we're just full of steel. There's nothing really special about seeing this. All the plates and discs are just wasted. They're full of garbage. It is tore up in here. So hopefully I can get that planetary out of that hub at some point so that we can kind of try to identify the failure. I don't know if they rebuilt that planetary. It's really fun working with one hand. And I'm left-handed too. I have to hold the camera with my left hand and I gotta kind of take this apart with my right hand. I don't know how you people use your right hand for anything other than balance or let's see, let's get this off. Come on. Just more debris, more debris, more debris. That's a snap ring groove right there. Then you got the O-ring, you got the metal seal rings, you got two of those. Those are in place. Yeah, this is gouged up pretty good um, from all the debris that went through. So I'm guessing that this reaction plate's probably no good. I don't know if it can be surfaced or not, or if it's worth surfacing it. But either way, it can't come off this way. Unless I can, no it can't because it's the, the shaft Let's I can get the shaft. If I get the shaft out, I can get this this half out and get this this side apart, and I'll be able to get the, just this planetary unit here, and then maybe we can get it apart. Okay. Uh, well, I tried to get this apart. I can't get the input shaft out of the output shaft. So on these here, this is the input shaft. This comes in from the torque converter. The drive line comes up to it, and it's got a yoke on there. And then this is the output shaft. This is what goes out to the differential drive unit. And that input shaft should slide out of here at this point. Um, I took the snap ring off this bearing here so that it'll come, because it comes out this direction, and it won't budge. So it is locked up with that output shaft. It's probably just full of debris or something. I was beating on it with my dead blow, and it wasn't moving. So I might have to try to hook it up into the uh, into my press over here and see if I can push it out. Um, but if I can't, it's all just kind of stuck together and this is all gonna be one unit as it goes into the steel bin. Nothing usable on it or not anyways. I mean, the output shaft looks okay. Um, if we can get it all apart, but it, you know what? It's probably tore up inside here. I don't know so Anyways, I guess that's kind of it for the video um, If I do get any more stuff to film if I get this apart I will add it to the video obviously you'll see it and then you won't even hear me talking right now So anyways, thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed already, please do and hit that like button, please I really appreciate it and have a good day